What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. I wanted to talk today about a tool that we can use in order to generate our PBR maps from images. So as most of you know, the PBR maps are really important for making our materials look realistic inside of our rendering software, but sometimes, depending on what you're using, you just don't have them. Well, this is a great free tool that you can use in order to generate those from images. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I absolutely love this tool. This is a free tool called Materialize that you can download and use in order to set up your PBR maps for a material where you don't have those. So you can actually generate those using this tool without having to figure out how to use Photoshop or anything like that. And so I will link to this in the notes down below. This is a free download. And all you have to do is come to this page and download this and then extract the file and then you can run it. And so when you extract the file, you're going to get a folder that looks something like this. And you're just going to want to run the application. Um, note that you want to put this somewhere where this has, uh, what does it say? It says you need to put this somewhere where it doesn't need special permission to write temp files. So I've just put this straight in my C drive. Um, you can put it wherever you want to, but you just want it to be somewhere where it can write that data without you having to give it permission to do that. And so to run it, you're just going to double click on this and it's going to pop this up. What I really love about this is this is actually running a Unity application. So this is an application they've written that basically gives you um, options in here to load in your different images and then you can preview what they're going to look like when they're rendered. And so in order to get started what we need to do is we need to start by loading in a diffuse map. So a diffuse map is going to be really important because that's going to be basically the image file that makes up our texture inside of this program. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on the O to open a file and we're going to go find the image that we want to use. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in my image that I want to use to create my map. So in this case, this is a JPEG image of a floor of some flooring that I took off the home improvement website. And so I like the way that this looks, but the problem with this is currently it doesn't have any kind of maps associated with it. So what that means is that means I don't have any displacement, I don't have any normal mapping, anything like that, which we want to load into our rendering software to make this material look more realistic. Well, this tool has tools built in in order to allow us to do that. And so to start off, what we want to do is we want to start by creating a height map. So notice right now I can't create a normal map. You have to create that height map first. So what we want to do is just come in here and click on the create button under height map. And so what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a little preview over here. And so notice how you've got a gray half and a colored half. The gray half is going to show you what your height map is going to look like. And the height map would also act as a displacement map. Remember that the more contrast there is between the light and dark areas, the more you're going to get a bunch of up and down from your image if you load in your height map. And so over here, there's a number of different options that basically affect the way that this is filtering your image in order to create that map. And so usually I end up using the presets for the most part. And so there's presets in here that you can click that are going to change how this image is going to look. So for example, um, if I want to get more details in here, so if I'm trying to get the details for like my normal map or something like that, I could use the details preset. And then notice how you can dial this in with this slider, um, but note that this map that we create is also going to affect the way that our normal map looks. So if it's blurry like this, then our normal map is going to be more blurry. If you click on details like this, it's going to be more defined and our normal map is going to be more defined. And so you can run this multiple times and then save different maps. So if you want one height map to be much more defined and have more contrast, um, then you can create one like that and then another one um, that's more designed to be a base for your normal map. So in my situation, and notice how you can adjust your contrast down here as well. So see how your contrast is going to affect the way that this is going to look too. So if you go with your default, your normals are going to look one way. If you go with the cracks, your normals are going to look a different way. And you can also adjust your overall contrast. So that's going to be the difference between the light and dark. Remember that the bigger the contrast, um, or the larger the contrast between the dark and the light, the more pronounced your effect is going to be. In this situation, I probably want to leave this at maybe like one and a half or something like that. And then once I've got this set, what I can do, I'm going to leave this on default up here. So I'm going to click on the button to set as height map. So what that's going to do is that's going to set this as our height map 
Well now, we have the option here to create a normal map. So what the normal map is going to do is it's going to take your height map and it's going to create a filter based on that that's going to act as your normal map. And so if you look at this, you can see how this is basically using that image file that you created in order to generate your normals. So you can see how right now, for example, these normals are really pronounced. And this is going to adjust depending on what kind of flooring you want to create. So for example, you can see how if you want to make this smooth, then this is going to kind of blur the edges a little bit more. Um, if you want to make it the default, or crisp, you can get different looks for your normal map. And notice how this is kind of previewing the way that the light would bounce off of this as well. So I really like that because you can actually see what the light is going to do. Um, you can also set this to kind of mids. It's really going to depend on um, how bumpy you want your floor to look. So you can also adjust that contrast up above to get more or less defined in here as well. So notice how you can adjust these different frequencies in here to kind of dial in the look you're going for. But if you're going for like a newer floor, then you're gonna want your contrast to be a little bit lower. If you're going for um, an older floor or something with a lot of recesses, you're gonna want a little bit stronger contrast. Make sure that you're not overdoing it though, cause that's not gonna be very realistic. So in this situation, we'll maybe leave this right here. Um, you can adjust these other things down below as well. So I recommend just kind of playing around with these until you get the look that you like. You can also adjust your final contrast up or down. Then you can set that as your normal map just by clicking right here. And that's gonna save that up here. And so there's other options in here as well. Um, I'm not really worried about these three. I might add an AO map real quick, an ambient occlusion map, um, just to kind of get the uh, just to kind of get the contrast between my darks and lights a little stronger. So to do that, I'm just going to click on Create, and it's going to go through and automatically create this. Um, and you can see how this is kind of calculating where the ambient occlusion would go, kind of where those darker highlights would be, um, depending on the roughness of your floor. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Set as AO map. And then um, I think we've done a pretty good job here. And so what I want to do is I want to preview how this is going to look on an object. So in order to do that, all I need to do is just come in here and click on the button for show full material. So what that's going to do is that's going to show me my material with everything kind of baked in here. So notice how I'm getting this kind of parallax displacement in here that you get from your height map. You can adjust that up and down in order to see what this is going to look like in various programs. So um, a lot of programs like Lumion that are doing the displacement now are using this parallax. So you can use this to kind of preview what that effect is going to look like. So you can also adjust your ambient occlusion power in order to see what this is going to look like with a higher or lower ambient occlusion. And so you can also preview this material on different kinds of objects. So for example, I can preview this on a cube. I find the cube gives me a really kind of a good look of what this material would look like when I mapped it on a larger surface. Um, so you can see how you can use this in order to preview that. And you can also use this to preview what those materials are going to do in here. You can also put it on a cylinder or a sphere and kind of look at those as well. Um, but I find for me, the cube um, gives me kind of the best look of what this might look like inside of a rendering. And so now what we want to do is we want to save our project. So I'm just going to come in here and click on the button for save project. And then we'll put this in a folder. I've created one labeled texture maps and we'll just call this flooring maps and click select. And so when we save our project, what that's going to do is that's going to go into that folder and that's going to save our different maps as well as the materialized file so that you can open that later. So if we look at these, let's go ahead and put these to extra large icons. And this one was left over from before, so I can delete that. But if you look at these, what this allowed us to do is this allowed us to um, create our diffuse map, our ambient occlusion map, our height map, and our normal map all associated with this material. So these are now ready for you to load them into your rendering software so that you can get much more realistic materials. All right, so I absolutely love this tool. Um, I find it so easy to generate these maps where in the past you had to have knowledge of Photoshop and filters and other things like that in order to make it work. If you're interested, you can also use this to make non-tileable textures or non-seamless textures seamless. I can make a video about that as well if you're interested. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the tool. Let me know if you've used it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down 
down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.